very interesting uh, and lengthy article in Eurasia Future by Andrew Cory Biko. Has the world been ignoring an almost decade-long African spring, he asks. Announcement that Bouteflika won't run for re-election, but will instead postpone the upcoming vote until the conclusion of his recently decreed comprehensive constitutional reform process represented the eighth non-electoral regime change in Africa in as many years making one wonder whether the world has been ignoring an almost decade-long African spring or if something else entirely is going on across the continent. Describing Bouteflika saying the majority youthful population's indignation at high unemployment and a stagnant economy to say nothing of how insulted they felt at an elderly leader who is speculated to be physically and perhaps even mentally incapacitated after suffering a 2013 stroke would be put forth once more as the face of the nation by what are thought to be his powerful military intelligence deep state handlers. He takes a look at Burkina Faso in 2014 the sudden onset of progressively violent protests in response to long-serving President Blaise Compaore's attempts to change the constitution to run for yet another term quickly resulted in a regime change that was briefly challenged a year later by loyalist special forces in a failed coup. Some observers predicted that the Burkinabe revolution would trigger an African spring against other rulers who'd been in office for decades and also were speculated to soon announce their intent to follow in Compaore's footsteps and change their own constitutions as well. Though this forecast didn't unfold as expected, I wrote that piece, Wagadugu's Signal to Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, it talks about Angola, it says it was a democratic transfer of power that summer from revolutionary leader Jose Eduardo dos Santos to fellow MPLA member and designated successor Jao Lorenzo in what was initially thought by many to be a carefully coordinated shuffling of the cards by the Angolan deep state but which eventually proved to be a deep state coup after Lorenzo quickly went to work eradicating the power structure that his predecessor implemented, and even going after the former royal family. Zimbabwe, tail end of 2017, Zimbabwe military carry out a de facto coup against non-agenarian non revolutionary leader Robert Mugabe during a period of rising, rising civil unrest. Um, barely anyone disputes that this was indeed a military coup and one that was possibly partially inspired by Mugabe's controversial grooming of his wife. Jacob Zuma, South Africa, pressured to resign in early 2018 due to what many have interpreted as being a deep state coup against him, carried out by a rival faction of the ruling ANC, led by his eventual successor Ramaphosa. Ethiopia captivated the world's imagination after its post-war ruling party decided upon the relatively young 41-year-old former military intelligence officer, Abiy Ahmed, to be its new leader following the outbreak of violent unrest in 2016 that threatened to turn Africa's second most populous country to civil war. Um, and saying that he swiftly got to work dismantling the party's old guard in what can only be described as a deep state coup with overwhelming public support. Comoros, it's difficult to categorize what exactly took place last year. Good point. DR Congo, very interesting take on this. Country was gradually sliding into an undeclared state of low-level civil war that could more accurately be described as a hybrid one and which would have exploded on command into a much larger conflict had he not unexpectedly reached a deal with one of the opposition leaders to supposedly allow Shishikedi to replace Kabila while the former strongman would remain the grey cardinal after his party came out on top in the parliamentary elections. Gabon, 
um, uh, saying the, you know, it's still not clear whether the French would use their in-country military forces to aid the embattled government and restore democracy if the rebels succeeded in seizing power from their proxy. Looks at targets, triggers, determinants. Uh, he's talking about President Bia in Cameroon. He's talking about the Republic of Congo not the DR Congo, talking about Chad, Equatorial Guinea, Mozambique, Sudan, interesting perspective, saying Sudan is indispensable to China's Silk Road vision for Africa and is also Russia's gateway to the continent. So its destabilization and possible balkanization would inflict very serious damage to multipolar integration processes all across the continent. Listen to this, the country that most closely fits the criteria of the author's non-electoral regime change model is Uganda. Um, President Museveni has ruled it for the last one-third of a century. Um, it's a very interesting article worth reading, just to give you some references to some of the articles I wrote. Wagadougou's signal to Sub-Saharan Africa in November 2014. Um, I said a very young, very informed, very connected African youth demographic. Many characterize it as a demographic dividend, but for beautiful blaze it turned into a demographic terminator. And I was saying it's set to alter the existing equilibrium. Ethiopia rising was after PM Abi had been in power for 90 days. I was calling him a virilian and Gladwellian figure. Why DR Congo delayed the election results, speaking to the point uh, that uh, Andrew has made. 21st of January is the end game in Harare, Khartoum and Kinshasa.